start today talking to the, those people who have never been to a Unitarian Universalist congregation, or maybe just been a few times, but are still unsure of what we're all about. I do this because it's easy for me and, and anyone who's preaching from up here to only preach to the members of our congregation. There may be some people here who don't know what a shorthand term like UU or RE means, who don't know the, the history of Unitarianism or Universalism or Unitarian Universalism, who don't know what UUs or Unitarian Universalists believe. And so when I say something like Unitarian Universalism, where you go to get your answers questioned, they might feel confused, like questions about what exactly? Here we believe that each person takes responsibility for their personal spiritual journey. We also believe that this community is on a shared spiritual journey. And my role as a, a minister is not to tell you what to believe, but to encourage you to look within and to have meaningful conversations with each other as you explore truth, purpose, meaning, as you consider what it is to be your best self, and as you determine how to make a positive difference in the world. For those of you who've been here a while, I want to ask you a question. And if you'll come up to the mic to answer it, we'll just take a few of these. You don't have to do, not everybody has to answer it. But I'd like you to come up and answer this question. You may be a Unitarian Universalist if. Okay, can I get a couple of people maybe to come up and say? You may be a Unitarian if. You got one, Bob? Got one? Yeah. Okay, come on, you can do it. Okay. <laughs> you may be a Unitarian if you believe that in some instances they burn a cross on people's lawn. You come to a Unitarian, you burn a question mark. You might be a you you if you feel you don't fit in. You might be a you you, um, like my father said, if you don't believe all those people in China and India are going to go to hell because they don't believe in Jesus. And these are. These are things I've heard before or experienced before. You might be a Unitarian Universalist if blowing bubbles or tossing a beach ball or making a collage or walking out among the trees to connect yourself with nature has ever been part of or has been a Sunday service. You might be a Unitarian Universalist if on Halloween or the winter solstice you ever heard someone talk about that, what they're wearing in terms of their pagan belief system. You've, had, you've heard civil conversations about the gender or genders of God or about whether there is one, many, or no deities at all. You've heard, I don't know, and considered it a valid theological or spiritual viewpoint. And you think the holy day of obligation is when it's your turn to bring the food on a Sunday morning. <laughs> if you have any question about the meaning of any of these statements, get with me or some of the people who are snapping their fingers or shaking their heads, <clears throat> they'll explain. And I'm being a little playful here this morning because I delight in being a Unitarian Universalist. And when I say delight, I know what it means for me, but I wonder what it means for you. 
Some might think delight is the same as joy or happiness. Or it might be about pleasure or satisfaction. Or maybe it's a happy surprise. Martha, would you offer a happy surprise? <laughs> I think delight is embodied joy or pleasure. An elevation of spirit that is felt and expressed physically, perhaps in a smile, and you can blow bubbles, yes, or laugh, or move, or maybe have a sparkle in your eye. It's your whole self in delight. I've also heard delight is a spiritual practice, which you are doing right now. This is a spiritual practice of delight. Sri Chimani is an Indian spiritual leader who taught meditation in the United States. And he wrote, he wrote, joy and happiness are something ordinary in comparison to delight. When you experience them, it is an ordinary, limited thing, unaspiring. But delight, delight we experience only when we lead an aspiring life. Only in a life of aspiration can we get delight. He goes on to say delight comes from the soul region. Can you feel that? Coming from the soul region? You know, in many faiths, you might hear if something you agree with or something you resonate with, and perhaps you resonated with this or with the bubbles, would you hear an amen in response to that? Or would you instead hear, hmm, that's interesting. Or, hmm, that really touches me. Or perhaps you snap your fingers. Not often you will hear an amen so much. Thinking of delight from a soulful or spiritual perspective brings me to the story of the monk we heard. The monk, the tigress, the mouse, the strawberry. I wonder when you heard this story, what you thought? Did you make any meaning of it? Did it switch your thinking in some way? Maybe you thought it didn't have any meaning at all, or perhaps that the choice that the monk made to eat the strawberry was just plain ridiculous. Now, I've read lots about this story. It's one of those stories you read in Zen Buddhism and lots of other places. And there are thoughts like the tiger above and the tiger below represent one's past, one's past and one's future. The past being guilts and resentments that stalk you and worries and fears about the future are what is harboring below. Hmm. And what about the present? Well, if you put yourself in this story, in the present, you're hanging from a vine. And there's a mouse eating away at it. Do you ever feel that way in your life when you're in the present? When you do feel that way, how do you respond to it? Do you look for another vine? Do you prepare to fall and... Do you prepare to climb up the vine and fight or try to run away from the tiger? Or do you reach out for that rich juicy strawberry that is right in front of you that offers you a moment of delight. Zen Buddhism might suggest that this crazy notion of staying in the present and looking for delight in the here and now 
eating that strawberry is perhaps the most spiritually healthy choice. But my friends, I'm, I know for me, and I suspect by, for many of you, surrounded by urgencies or past issues, how often do we make that choice? How often do we practice mindfulness, staying in the present, feeling, embodying the many delights the present offers us? It is so hard to not attend to those many pressing concerns. Ah, but the luxury, the luxury of the strawberry. As I was thinking about this story, I come back to wondering why do people come to this congregation, to this sanctuary on a Sunday morning? Are you here because of the past or the future, what stalks you or awaits you? Well, no, you are welcome here, friend. We're here to help ground you and support you. Or are you here for what delights you might experience in the present, in the moment that we are here together? Because we are here to share in the joys of what you, we, discover. Is being in this place with these people at this moment about healing, about friendship, about acceptance, about affirming certain values? If so, you found a home here. It's about being in community where we come to be assured that siblings surround us to restore their images on our eyes, where we enlarge our voices in common speaking and singing together, where it is good to be with one another. It is good to be with you. Here we think about the value of past and future, here we bring time, treasure, and talent needed to keep this place vital and thriving, not only for us, but for anyone who walks in these doors now or any time in the future. Here we seek actionable responses to racism, homophobia, transphobia, all the other prejudices and biases and hatreds that are prominent in our world around us. And here we seek delight. And here we seek delight. So I ask you for a moment to join me in a brief meditation. To gently close your eyes and take a deep breath in and a slow breath out. And be in this moment. In this moment, right now, what is your strawberry? What do you experience as your moment of delight right now? What does it look like? What does it feel like? How does it touch your spirit? Regardless of what is past or future, regardless of what else might be going on in the world right now in this moment?
Take in that strawberry. All right, now return here and now, and you can open your eyes. We might talk about your strawberries when we get done with the service today. But I ask you to do that today because people come here not to have their bucket emptied, but to fill their bucket, to fill their heart and soul with peace and love and joy, whatever strawberries they need to be able to cope with the world that is not always so kind or peaceful or loving or joyful. People come here for hope and healing. People come here to look more deeply within themselves in a community that does the same with them, to search for truth and meaning and purpose. And we may not always say it from this pulpit, but I hope you know it. I hope I express it in one way or another every Sunday, in some way. That there is delight here. Always delight here. for us to mindfully taste. So my friends, let us take this time, this space on Sunday mornings together to look for what that is already there in front of us, what delight there is right in front of us. Even when we feel there are tigers above and tigers below and a mouse, mouse eating away at the vine that you're holding on, in this place, in this community, there will always be somewhere, some way in our relationships and something that's said and what we affirm, strawberries waiting right in front of you if you allow yourself into that moment. And I invite you not just to taste those strawberries, to take them into your body, your mind, your heart, your soul, but to give thanks for them, gratitude, because that helps us to remember that strawberries exist in our world. It seals them on our heart as we go forth to do the work of the world. as writer, activist, and facilitator Adrian Mary Brown wrote. If you put your attention on suffering, which is constant and everywhere, it is all you will see. Joy will come and laughter, but you will find it brief, possibly even a distraction. Put your attention on joy and delight being connected to other people, feeling whole, and you will find that everywhere. Your heart will still break, you will still know grief, but you will find it a reasonable cost for the random abundance of miracles and the soft, wild rhythms of love of all the wonderful strawberries that exist around us. May it always be so.